Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Another way that you can be smart is through energy. And obviously, you know, we hear more and more about that. Um, as oil continues to rise, you know, there was the, the big crisis last summer when oil was up around $150 a barrel. Everybody's talking about being smarter with energy. Um, and that goes along with the smart car. Here at Big Trends, when we do some of our mentoring and coaching programs, we really like to talk with people about mating, making smart goals. And that's just simply, you know, everybody likes to make goals and set goals for themselves that can, you know, really get them to where they want to go. Um, and SMART is an acronym here for us. Um, so if you want to write that down, you, you can go ahead and write it down. Um, the S in SMART stands for specific. So you have to be really specific uh, about your goals. Uh, for example, as a trader, um, don't just say you want to be profitable. You know, how profitable do you want to be? You know, say maybe, you know, we're, earing, we're nearing um, the later stages of 2009 here. So maybe you say, you know, in 2010, as I really get things focused towards that, between now and the end of 2010, I would like to be profitable to the tune of up uh, 20% during that period of time. You know, and obviously your, your number could be higher or lower than that, but it's got to be specific. The M is measurable. So you want to make sure that you're able to measure your goal. Did I reach it, yes or no? There should be no gray area there. You should be able to clearly define, yes, I reached it, or no, I did not. The A is attainable. So is it, is it a goal that you ultimately can reach? Now, you know, going back to the example of saying I want to be up 20% between now and the end of 2010, you don't want to jump into a situation and say, you know, I want to be up 150% between now and then. You know, I, I guess theoretically it is possible, but you also have to be, you know, it has to be an attainable goal, and the, the R in SMART, it has to be realistic. So kind of tying those two together, you want to make sure that it is something that you can reach. It might be a little bit of a stretch, but it's something that you can reach. It's realistic. It's not completely over your head where you're ultimately setting yourself up for failure. And then timely. You want to have to uh, be able to set a deadline or a timeline on when you're going to be able to reach that goal. So in the example I set, you know, through the end of 2010, well, then you should be able to look at things on January the 31st of 2011 and say, you know, did I meet my goal? If I did not, you know, where, where were some of the breakdowns? And obviously you can create smart goals and time frames in that, maybe on a weekly, monthly, or quarterly basis. They don't have to go out as far as a year. But you want to make sure that your goals really have that smart characteristic to them as well. Now, one of the smartest indicators that we have found um, in terms of spotting a trend is percent %R. Now, a lot of you might be familiar with this particular indicator. Um, it was created by a gentleman, a uh, very intelligent technical analyst uh, named Larry Williams. Larry designed the indicator really as a way to quantify extremes where the market re might reverse and change direction. Uh, so similar to how Bollinger Bands were initially created, you know, if you get a break outside the Bollinger Band on the upside, well, that means that there's too much bullishness in the, in the market, the market's likely, likely to pull back, right? Same concept with percent art. Basically, it was trying to quantify how bullish or bearish the overall market is. And then once you have that quantified, you know, are you at an extreme in bullish or bearishness where you would expect a potential pullback and reversal in the opposite direction? Now, the R, for, for those of you who might not be familiar with this indicator, stands for range. So it's percent range. So basically what you're looking at um, is the particular indicator, whatever setting that you use. You want to say during that particular setting, we actually use the 30-bar setting. So we've tweaked the normal 14-bar setting to actually a 30-bar setting because it smooths out some of that noise. Remember the information overload that we were talking about earlier? We're looking to smooth some of that out even more through the use of our indicators. So using a 30-bar setting, this works for any time frame that you're trading from, by the way. Uh, we spent years trying to really focus it and, and hone it in 
So whether you're trading from a weekly chart or whether you're trading from a five-minute chart, um, it doesn't matter the time frame or anything in between for that matter. We still use the 30 bar setting ultimately. So what you're looking at in the last 30 bars is the highest high and the lowest low during those last 30 bars. Well, that's going to be your range that you're looking at. So what this indicator tells us is within that range, where are we? Are we in the, the top 10 percentile? Are we in the bottom 10 percentile? Where is that? So to let you know some of the rules that we use, we use some, technology, uh, some terminologies here that you may or may not be familiar with, but we use the term setup and then confirmation. Ultimately, one of the phrases that we share a lot is that one bar does not make a trend. So we like to see a two-step process to confirm that there is in fact, and so we don't get faked out and whipsawed out of a particular trade. So in doing so, it's the two-step process. The first step is on a particular bar, you have to see a setup. On the next bar or in subsequent bars, um, our rules are within the next five bars, you have to see confirmation. So on the bullish side of things, we look for an overbought reading above 80. Once percent R goes above 80, that's going to be our bull setup. Now, this original indicator, if you have it on your charting platform, uh, originally went from zero down to negative 100. We flipped that. So now it goes from positive 100 down to zero. The concept's still the same. We just felt like it was a little easier to, to deal with positive numbers as opposed to, to negative numbers uh, when we were working with our clients. So that's the way we've tweaked it. So on the old scale, it would be an overbought reading would be above negative 20. Uh, here we're talking about above 80. In terms of a confirmation, once you have that set up bars um, close, so we have our overbought reading above 80 to give us our bull setup. To, to get a confirmation, we close above the setup bars high within the next five bars. So not just a subsequent close above 80 on percent R, we then look at the price action. What we're looking for here is to see a series of higher highs because that tells you that the bulls are really in control. Not only is it a bullish trend, but it is a very strong bullish trend. And there's a difference between just having a trend and having a strong trend. So obviously we want to find the strongest trend that is there. We do have it as well. And ultimately, on the retest, once you have a bull confirmation, so we've had our setup and we've had our confirmation, we've gone through that two-step process. Then we go back to watching the percent R indicator. And we get a, when we get a break back down in the percent R indicator, below 80. To eliminate some of the noise, we, we technically put our settings at 79.50 or less, but just for simplicity purposes, we'll say when it breaks back down below 80, that's a retest. That's not a signal to get out. That's what we call a retest. Once you have a retest on the bullish side, the low of that bar is your new closing stop. So if you get multiple retests during a trend, you continue to tighten your stop. And we do use closing stops. So we wait for the close of a particular bar. We don't have hard stops out there. Because I know all of us have experienced a time where, um, you know, you've been in a particular trade, you had a stop, you got taken out during the day only to see the, the position reverse back in your direction by the close and then continue on without you. So we use a closing stop where we wait until the close of a bar. If it then violates, we exit at our next potential opportunity. So if you're a daily trader, we wait for the end of the day, read the charts from there, and then if you need to exit the trade, we'll do it the next morning. You are going to have a little bit of a gap risk there, but you're limiting or eliminating your risk of being whipsawed out of a trade by using this method. Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.